Who are the biggest snubs from the 2022 MLB All-Star Game? The rosters got announced a few days ago, and there are some names that feel extremely obvious that should have been on this roster that didn't end up making it. So I've got a list of about 10-ish, I think it's, it actually might be 12. We're going to call it 10-ish players that I think were the biggest snubs from the MLB All-Star Game, and I'll tell you exactly why. Before I do tell you the names, though, I want you to get down in the comment section below and tell me who you think was the biggest snub from the 2022 MLB All-Star Game, as well as drop a like on the video if you enjoy it, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you. First guy in today's video is going to be Carlos Correa for me. Tim Anderson, I know, was voted as the starter at shortstop, so it's not really anybody's fault. It was the fans. They voted Tim Anderson in to start the game, and let's be honest, he probably doesn't really deserve it. Carlos Correa, on the other hand, while he isn't having a crazy, insane season that you can't miss, I think the year that he's had thus far through 64 games is better than Tim Anderson's, definitely. He's got 10 homers, 31 RBIs on the season, with a 278 average, 351 on base, 452 slugs slugging and a 130 WRC plus, which is among the best in all of baseball. Again, he hasn't been on the field as much, and you can make an argument that maybe JP Crawford or even Corey Seager could also deserve this more than Tim Anderson. But to me, Carlos Correa kind of feels like the guy that should have been in the backup shortstop, and Xander Bogarts really should have been started. This next player, I'm not sure how they missed it, but how does Will Smith not get on here? Will Smith has been not only one of the best catchers in the National League, but one of the best catchers in the game. According to Blake Harris, who is a Los Angeles Dodgers beat reporter, I believe, for ESPN, PN, Will Smith, going into Sunday, was tied for the most home runs in the National League among the National League catchers, had the highest walk rate, the highest X-slugging percentile, highest X-ISO percentile, highest barrel rate, second highest WRC+, plus, second highest OPS+, plus, second in RBIs, second in on-base percentage, second in OPS, and second in WOBA. Travis Arnaud's having a pretty solid season, but it does feel like Will Smith is just better in every single category. The only guy he's behind is Wilson Contreras, who definitely deserves to start. For me, Will Smith definitely was a huge snub for the National League All-Stars. Guy's just so good. What feels like the big one that everybody's talking about on Twitter is going to be Dylan Cease of the Chicago White Sox. Of course, Dylan Cease might have gotten honestly bumped out by his own teammate, Tim Anderson, who got the lone White Sox All-Star spot. Dylan Cease was more deserving. He's currently 11th in baseball in F4 among pitchers at 2.5. He has a 2.45 ERA, which puts him for the fourth lowest in the American League. He has a K rate of 34.3%, walk rate of 11.1, but still his K to walk is very high at 23.2%. That's one of the highest in the American League. He has a FIP at 2.81, a Sierra at 3.14, XFIP 2.96, WHIP at 1.23. I mean, all of the numbers just kind of tell you that Dylan Cease deserves to be an all-star over guys like Nestor Cortez. Sorry, Yankee fans. Dylan Cease is just better this year. Obviously, Paul Blackburn gets on because he's the lone Oakland representative, but it does feel like Dylan Cease, for some reason, just got kicked to the curb as a pitcher here. He deserved to be on the team for sure. He's having a great year. The only guy who's like better in the American League in terms of striking out hitters is Shane McClanahan, who is the best pitcher in the American League right now. You know who has a legitimate beef? Taylor Ward. There are plenty of guys who have made the All-Star game this year with similar amounts of plate appearances. Jock Peterson, while he is on the National League side, has less plate appearances than Taylor Ward on the American League, and Taylor Ward's numbers are pretty insane. The guy's hitting 296 with a 387 on base, 517 slugging, a WRC plus at 158, which is the fourth highest in all of baseball, not just the American League, just happens to also be the same for the American League but fourth highest in all of baseball, 12 homers, 34 RBIs, he even scored 42 runs. He's walking more. He's not striking out. I know Taylor Ward is not necessarily on the best team with the Angels right now, but this guy probably should have not just only made the all-star team. He should be starting. The dude's having an unbelievable year, seemingly out of nowhere. I don't know why he got snubbed. I'm honestly not particularly sure. The dude's having a great year. He deserves it. It's probably that stupid thing where every team needs a representative. While Ben Benintendi is having a great year, Taylor Ward's probably better. Back to the National League we go, and the National League's absolutely loaded with talent, especially at the first base position. Of course, you have Paul Goldschmidt and Pete Alonso, who were seemingly locks to make the All-Star team, and then it was really a battle between who's going to get that last spot, and because, again, of the rule where every team needs to have one representative, CJ Crone ends up getting it over a guy like Josh Bell, or even for Freddie Freeman, both who are having better years, both who should be all-stars. But again, limited roster capacity. Both these guys end up getting snubbed. Josh Bell has 12 home runs on the year. Freddie Freeman has 11. They've both driven in around 50 RBIs. They both are walking around 11%, striking out about 15. And their WRC plus is at 143 for Josh Bell and 146 for Freddie Freeman. Both of these guys deserve to be all-stars, but because of the rule, it makes it a little complicated. You can make the argument that Josh Bell almost deserves it more than Juan Soto this year. It's crazy, but I understand why they're not in it still, it is kind of annoying because they are having all-star years and neither of these guys will get that on their resume. Now, this next one's also kind of going to be a dual player one, and that's going to be the Philadelphia Phillies got snubbed 
on the pitching side. I think both Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola have an argument to make the all-star game. I think Wheeler more so, but even Nola, I think, has an argument. If we're looking at ERAs, Wheeler is fifth in the National League with a 2.46 ERA, Nola 14th, so I get Nola a little bit more, but Wheeler, 27.2% K rate, 5.5% walk rate, puts him at a K to walk of 21.7, among the best in the National League. He has a whip at 1.05. Like I said, that ERA is low at 2.46, fifth best in the National League, a FIP at 2.45, which is among, well, it's actually the second best FIP in the National League. He's been phenomenal. While he started off the year a little bit slow and maybe hasn't been as dominant as he was last year, I'm not quite sure how Zach Wheeler didn't make this all-star team. And again, you could probably make the argument for Aaron Nola too, because he's walking absolutely nobody and has a 24.4 K to walk ratio. It's disgusting. Both of them are good. Zach Wheeler's my big gripe though. See, Phillies fans, I can show you some love when you deserve it. Where my Jonah Himes stands at. Let's talk about Jonah Himes' absolute robbery of making the all-star game. Jonah Himes, despite what I thought about him going into this year, based on what I've seen, has been one of the better catchers in all of baseball, just in terms of the entire league. He is seventh in WRC+, and when you shorten it up with just American League only, Jonah Heim is second, only behind Alejandro Kirk. Now, Jose Trevino is having a great year, and I don't want to take anything away from him, but Jonah Heim has just simply been better at every aspect of the game, except maybe defensively, which is that what we really pay for in the All-Star game? I don't know. I want to see bats. I don't really care about the defense. Jonah Heim is having a career season. Like I said, 12 home runs, which I believe is the most in the American League for catchers. Driving in 31 runs, under 20% K rate, 7.4% walk rate, an ISO at 213, which is among the best of all catchers in the American League. Hitting 265 with a 317 on base, 479 slugging, puts him at an OPS of 796. The dude deserves to be on this all-star team. A full 50 points higher OPS than Jose Trevino. I know the defense for Trevino has been better, but for me, I think Heim probably deserved that spot just slightly more. I think he got snubbed. This next player is a little more complicated. Ty France. I think Ty France was definitely snubbed. I think he had an argument to be the starter in the All-Star game. I also think he definitely deserves to be a reserve. I know Ty France plays first base, but he can also play second, third. He's a bit of a utility man. So the fact that he was left off the roster, and I know he did have a bit of a nagging injury recently, but he's back. It's a little bit head scratching to me. Now he's fifth in the American League at OPS among first basemen, but he is hitting 306, a 380 on base, 460 slugging. He's third in WRC plus at 147, and he's behind G-Man Choi, who wasn't going to make it just because of the lack of plate appearances. But that's a full 17 points higher than Vlad Guerrero Jr. A rise is above Ty France, so I mean, that makes sense that he's a backup, but he's also a utility man. I just don't really understand how Ty France doesn't make it. I know he doesn't hit 20 homers. He doesn't have the most exciting numbers, but you look at this player as a whole, and you can see how valuable he is, not only to the Mariners, but just any organization that would have him. He deserves to be in this all-star game. The dude got snubbed. Down to our final two, and this one, it's tough. Austin Riley got snubbed, but that being said, he isn't having a better year than Arenado and Machado. I just feel like there should be a way that Austin Riley finds himself onto the All-Star Game roster because the year he's having, he should be considered or celebrated as an All-Star. I mean, he's just casually like one of the best third basemen in the league. Again, 23 homers, 56 RBIs, hitting 282 with a 349 on base, 559 slugging. That's good for a WRC plus of 148, a WOBA of 386, which is among the highest, not only at third base, but just in the entire National League. That's good enough for a 907 OPS, second highest in the National League among third basemen. The defense, of course, is not like Arenado. It's not like Machado, so you're not going to get that defensive value. But at the plate, the dude absolutely mashes and rakes. I get there's not enough spots, but it just feels like Austin Riley probably deserved to find a way onto this roster somehow. And then last but certainly not least, I want to show some love north of the border to the Toronto Blue Jays and Kevin Gaussman. I know Kevin Gaussman has been a bit up and down this year, sometimes a little inconsistent but the numbers on paper are among the best in all of baseball. 27% K rate, 4.3% walk rate. Disgusting. Really, really good. And when you look at his K to walk ratio, 22.6%, that puts him fourth highest in the entire American League. While opponents are hitting 270 against him, you're putting the ball in play a little bit more than you'd like. He's limiting the long ball like crazy. His home run per nine is 0.2. He has a FIP of 1.67, an ERA of 2.86. That FIP, by the way, is by and large the best in all of baseball. And the ERA is still really good. I just don't really get why he didn't make it. Like, I, I get it. He's been a little shaky. He's had some inconsistent starts. But overall, this year, Kevin Gaussman has been an all-star. He carried this Blue Jays rotation for the beginning of the season. I don't really like that he was left off of the team when some other pitchers made it that maybe were a little bit more suspect. But I do assume that a lot of these guys that I mentioned in today's video will end up making the roster when guys tap out because of injury or because pitchers threw too close to the game and don't want to use their arm during the all-star game. They won't be available. A guy like Kevin Gaussman, I fully expect will end up making it somehow. So those are the biggest snubs, in my opinion, for the 2022 MLB All-Star Game roster. I'd love to know what you
you guys think about it down in the comment section below. Who do you think was the biggest snub? Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it, as well as subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you all baseball season long. Follow me on all my social media at GiraffeNeckMark. Link is in the description to all of that. And that's where I'll wrap up today's video. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload. Click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Bye!